Hi there, my name is Ollie, and I present Philosophy Tube, the educational channel that you're watching right now. A while ago, one of my favourite YouTubers, Thomas Tomscar Ridgewell, made How to YouTube, and as a kind of footnote to that, I wrote an article for The Independent, one of the UK's national newspapers. Unfortunately, a lot of that article got cut out during the editing process, so I made this video to go along with it. Traditional media outlets like describing YouTube with what I call the Wild West metaphor. They say that YouTube is like the Wild West. It's a frontier where anybody can make a fortune, and more importantly, they imply that anybody can do it and that everybody has an equal shot, which is not quite 100% true. So as well as everything in Tom Scar's video, here are four extra things that I think might come in handy if you want to be a YouTuber. Number one, have money. You're gonna need a camera and a microphone and some editing software, and those things don't grow on trees. Now, Tom is right that you don't necessarily need to have the very best equipment when you start out, but the end product needs to be good enough for people to want to watch it. Because the very big YouTubers have professional looking videos, people do expect that more and more. Surprisingly, you may also need to pay travel costs. If you want to go to conventions and meetups and training sessions in YouTube's creator spaces, then you're gonna have to pay to get there. And if you live nearby, then that's fine for you, but if, like me, you live in the north, then train fares are pretty expensive. Now hopefully, if you grow your channel to a certain size, you'll be able to make some of that money back through advertising and brand sponsorships and crowdfunding and merchandising, but you need to reach a certain size before those really become viable options. YouTube is a lot like stand-up comedy. You have to pay to do it for quite a while before anyone will pay you to do it. And if you don't achieve that level of success, then those startup costs are gone. So there might be a fortune to be made in the Wild West, but you've got to pay to get there first, which brings me on to number two, be white. Oh. Obviously you don't have to be white to be a YouTuber. This section is just closely related to the one before. You may have noticed that the English speaking section of YouTube is fairly, though obviously not completely, white. And that's because white people tend to be the ones with the disposable income necessary to pay all of those startup costs. In the UK, white families have more assets per household and are less likely to have zero savings than non-white families, according to the Department of Work and Pensions. So this isn't so much a systematic problem with YouTube itself, so much as YouTube is an institution created by a society that is not yet equal, and it still has the fingerprints of that inequality on it. But what about YouTubers X, Y, and Z? They're not white. Or what about YouTubers A, B, and C? They're white, but they got to where they are because they're really good. I mean, it's especially YouTubers B and C. Those guys, they're hilarious. Well, yeah, individual counterexamples are consistent with my overall point, which is that YouTube can reflect rather than eliminate existing societal inequalities. At least a heck of a lot more than this Wild West metaphor would lead you to believe. The Wild West metaphor might actually work too well. YouTube may be a gold rush, but once you get there, you might find that all the best panning spots have been taken by rich white folks. I should add, by the way, that this is not the way things should be. I want this to change about YouTube and about society in general. And before you say anything, yes, I am aware that I myself have been privileged by this inequality. Number three, be male. Uh... Moving even deeper into slightly uncomfortable territory, it is true that if you are male on YouTube, you will generally receive much less abuse than you would if you were not male. You can check out this video on what it's like to be a woman on YouTube if you're interested in that. Like, just as one example, the internet sometimes doesn't like it when people talk about feminism. But when I talk about feminism on my channel, I get so much less flack for it than female content creators do talking about the same stuff. Like, I have a friend who I won't name for her privacy who also runs an educational channel. I don't think I've ever received gendered abuse in my comments section, but she gets gendered abuse every day just because she's a woman. Again, this is not the way things should be, and again, individual counterexamples are consistent with the overall point. This is a problem with a lot of online spaces, and a lot of spaces generally. The Wild West metaphor is still working too well. YouTube's like the Wild West. It can be pretty horrible if you're not a man. Number four, be charismatic. Oh, thank God, this one's much happier. I don't just mean be charismatic on camera. That's not actually 100% necessary. Obviously. In every industry, when you go to meetings and parties and events and conventions outside of the traditional work hours, you're going to need to make a good impression. You're going to need to know how to schmooze, and 
YouTube is no exception to that. It's a little bit of a shame that an industry that is built on authenticity and being an honest, approachable, down-to-earth person that an audience can relate to has a place for networking, especially since a lot of it's online. You'd think that for being a YouTuber, it wouldn't matter if you have the social skills of a dead sea cucumber when you're actually at a party, so long as you can write a polite email. But like in all areas of life, being a personable person will help. You don't have to be cynical with your networking. Don't work the room trying to find the most famous person or the person you can get the most out of because that's called being a selfish asshole. But do be prepared for business opportunities to come wearing casual clothes. CONCLUSIONS! My number one bit of advice for anybody who wants to be a YouTuber is don't go into it with stars in your eyes. It's a job. And like every job, it has good days and bad days. And it's hard work. It's not this glamorous Wild West thing that the traditional media have been selling you. And sometimes it's even unfair. But the one thing that I was most upset about being cut out of the article that I wrote would be that it is worth it. It is so, so worth it. If you want to be a YouTuber, then don't let me discourage you for one second, because it really is one of the most incredible and amazing things that I am privileged to be able to do, even just part-time the way I do it. Like, when you when you make something, like you make a video, and you connect with a stranger about it, it really is one of the most incredible feelings you can have. Like, when a stranger says to me, oh, I learned something really cool from one of your videos, or I looked at something in a way that I'd never looked at things before, that is an incredibly worthwhile experience. And it will be all the more fantastic for you because you will have to throw off your illusions to do it. You can meet and work with incredibly talented creative people on YouTube. Not just creators, but fans as well. Like I've said before, I have one of the best comment sections on YouTube. There is this grey, real-world corporate side to YouTubing. And that's a shame, but like one of my favourite creators once said to me, you can make the business serve your real passion. And for me, that's educating people who might not otherwise have had the chance to learn the things that I've been privileged to learn. And if connecting with your audience is what you want to do, then go for it. Go for it so frickin' hard. Go for it knowing that it's not perfect and it's not glamorous, and you will have an amazing time despite all of that. And we will see you on the internet. I hope you found this video useful or at least interesting. If you did, then the nicest thing you could do from my point of view would be to share it and let other people who might want to be YouTubers see it and take what they can from it. Special thanks to Tom Scar for his video. Obviously the editing style of this one was a little bit of a deliberate homage to his own style. If you haven't already checked out his stuff, then you should really consider doing that because he's quite an inspiring guy. Kitsch as that sentiment can be. And of course, for philosophical videos every Friday, Please subscribe.